tuning in and hopefully doing a little bit of painting with me today. Um, as promised last week, this week I'm going to start with kind of a little show and tell of some of my paintings, some work that you haven't seen before, some work that you might recognize from a couple years back. So just to kind of give you an example or just to show you what my watercolor journey has been like because there's some YouTube videos out there where I'm painting where I'm really just getting started with watercolors and I hope that you'll find that encouraging because I've learned just over the last couple of years really from um, no watercolor knowledge or know-how to the point where I'm at today well I'm still learning but uh, yeah so we're gonna do that there's gonna be a giveaway we'll do that a little later um, and we're going to get into a fun project we're going to create some little bookmarks with watercolor and watercolor paper and we'll decorate an envelope as well. So kind of doing some small stationary items that you could potentially, if you felt safe doing so, send to a friend or loved one in the mail to let them know that you are thinking of them. Or you could save it for when things are a little less, uh, you know. <laughs> so anyway, small project today, but lots to talk about and a giveaway. That's what's coming up. Um, where should we begin? I think we'll just jump right in and talk a little bit about the paintings. Um, yeah, so grab a cup of tea. And if you would like to paint along, all the supplies are listed in the video description. So this week you can just have a quick read and you can grab those now if you want to, you know, follow along. Oh, and make sure to comment. Comment, comment, comment. And Chris will be, um... I'll be watching Oops. comments. Chris will be watching Hello, the everybody. comments. <laughs> yes, Chris, Chris is here. <laughs> this is in Chris. In the background. I don't let him on camera. <laughs> 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 but he is here and he'll be, um, you know, reading through the comments and, uh, so I try to answer questions as I'm painting, as I'm going. So if you have a question, let me know. Um, but for now, let's talk a little bit about um, paintings and how I got started and you all that. Do you yeah. want to take a second to talk about the hashtag? Oh, right, the hashtag. Yes, I do. Okay, so our question of the week for you is, we are trying to think of a good hashtag that we can use on social media because so many of you are recreating the artwork from the videos as usual, but it's really gone crazy since everyone is staying home. We're seeing so many great recreations of the planner pages, the watercolors, everything, all of it. And uh, we, we, we've never come up with a good hashtag for sharing and I have no idea what it should be. We need something unique I don't want it to be like shade out artwork because that doesn't really like represent you that it's your artwork so we need to think of something and uh, yeah so people can comment comment as you like and then if you want to um, if you see a hashtag that you like that someone else suggests you know uh, chime in and uh, and we'll talk about it in the comments yeah like else. get some chatter going yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, maybe by the end we can think of one that we can all agree on and hopefully Hopefully. And with that said, we've also received a lot of emails um, with artwork and photos of your artwork. And just know that we will get back to you. We're trying our best to get back to everybody. We've just got such a volume of messages right now. So um, yes, but thank you for sending me. And, and I love seeing all the work that you're doing because everybody is out there learning to draw and paint. And I think that is really cool. And it's a really great way to spend your time and actually with that said I'm just gonna ramble on as usual oh I should actually throw in for the hashtag <laughs> before um, everyone says perfectly imperfect we think that's a great hashtag oh, yeah but it's already a super popular hashtag yeah. just for people who are perfectly imperfect yeah um, so <laughs> we're thinking maybe something a little less yeah broad, broad even though we do love that idea yes has to be a little more specific so um, yeah and uh, what was I gonna say Mm, I forget, maybe it wasn't that important. I was just gonna say it's a good time right now to be doing art and taking on something new. I know actually Chris and I are trying to do as much extra content as we possibly can and we even have something special planned for later this week. Um, but that's all I can say about it for now. Hopefully we'll have it done and we'll have something good coming up later. As usual, we're doing our Tuesday and Friday videos and um, now we've added this Monday live stream for the foreseeable future, so. As long as we're all locked down. Yeah, as long as, long as we're all stuck in our house. 
We might as We're well. We're going to hang out together. <laughs> yeah. So, good stuff coming up. Um, and I am going to go and show you guys. You know what? I'm going to flip that. I'm going to give you a little artwork tour. Um, so, I started watercolors about 2015. And this is some of my sort of my early florals. You can see they're fine, but the colors maybe aren't what I would do now. And um, the flowers aren't really developed. They're just sort of a little bit blurry and that's okay. You know, I was learning. I just wanted to show you, you know, this is where I began. This is one of my earlier videos. This is a video all about watercolor pencil crayons. Um, so yeah, I did that when I was in Iceland. This one you might recognize. Um, this watercolor leaves video was a super early video. And um, what I, my trick for developing my watercolors was if I didn't really like them and they didn't look um, detailed enough, I would just add the detail in with black pen. My sketchy black lines, you know about this. So that's something that I still do today, even though now I'm able to kind of add the level of detail that I want, usually, sometimes. Um, this one is from a couple years ago. Working in monochromatics is a great way to develop the way you paint without having to worry about colors mixing into one another. It just takes a whole section off the table. All of the color mixing, all of the figuring out a palette, and you just focus on form. And uh, I think by doing some of those, I was able to develop my style a little bit more and develop my uh, floral painting style. And then these are examples of um, floral watercolors where I used that black pen to kind of give me that extra detail, but you can see I'm getting a little more comfortable um, with color and sort of mixing colors that I'm happy with and coming up with color palettes that really speak to my aesthetic. So it took me a few years to get there. I got a lot of questions last week about, do you ever make art you're not happy with? Like, yes, oh my gosh, all the time. I'm always second guessing. I'm not saying that that is a good thing, but I think it's a really natural thing. And it's certainly, I'm always thinking, oh, I could have done that a little better, or I should have done it this way. And I'll paint things two and three times um, to get it where I want it. <laughs> um, and then the, these are some others. Um, this is from a year back. So oh, just another example of a color palette that I liked. This is from not too long ago. Even though I am getting better with my watercolors, I still love adding those sketchy black lines. And this is actually available as a printable page on Patreon um, so that you could actually print it onto watercolor paper and then um, paint it yourself. And here is some more practice work that I've done. You may have not have seen this one before. This is from almost a year ago, just practicing my watercolors. There's lots of things that I see in this that could have been better. The daisies kind of like just disappear. There's not quite enough room for them. And uh, some of the stuff is a little funny, but that's all right. Um, but then this one is so similar to that other painting, but in this one I've kind of been more successful with the white flowers and um, just successful with a lot of things. And this will be uh, coming out tomorrow. So this is a little preview of what's up on the channel tomorrow, Tuesday. Here's another good example. Um, this is the black uh, dark floral that I did and this was my practice. I don't always do full prep for the videos. But if we take a look, then the one I did on camera, I think turned out a lot better. And it's simply because, um, you know, I had really prepped and so that's the power of kind of doing something twice. Not that you should always do everything twice, but um, it, can, it can make the difference to put in that time. And then this one is something where I really pushed myself outside of my comfort zone and tried to make a floral painting that incorporated a little more depth and so we did this wonderful wet into wet background and that is the latest bonus video on Patreon. Um, you can get the, at the $2 level, you can get access to all the bonus tutorials and the bonus content that we put out on Friday. So if you're looking for more content, um, consider checking out Patreon. And then I'm going to finish up 
with my little show and tell here. These are some florals that I did in my spare time, stuff that where I was sort of pushing myself to be a little more realistic, a little bit more of a muted color palette. So just trying to push my own style. And then that resulted in, a, that was a bonus tutorial on Patreon as well. Here's one, here's a never before seen. This is one where I was trying to get more realistic, um, but I stopped painting it because I just wasn't happy with the color palette. I didn't like how the, um, the pink was too pink and I didn't like the way it looked with the greens. So I think it's just good for you to see sometimes, like I'm not always happy with my paintings quite often, <laughs> um, but I still consider that, you know, a good practice, a good bit of practice. That's from last year. That's from another uh, Patreon video. These guys are, we're getting like super realistic as far as I, I'm concerned. I'm not a very realistic painter, but uh, those are from the watercolor e-course. And then this guy is um, coming up. Oh, this probably won't be on the channel until May, but um, this is one that I was working on and I wanted to share it with you because um, the, this was supposed to be really loose and free and these beautiful practice uh, oranges and orange blossoms. I thought maybe they were a little too loose, like they could have been a bit more realistic. So then in my spare time, I created this one, but then this one I almost feel like is too realistic. I mean, I love realism, but with watercolors, I'm always aiming for something that is in between that's super realistic and loose. I think there's just something beautiful about it not looking like a photograph, and that's my style, um, but uh, I think there's um, something in the middle there where it's sort of magical, where it looks like the orange blossom, where it looks like the lily, but it's still loose. There's an artistic interpretation. So I don't think things always have to look exactly like a photograph, um, and I hope that uh, you'll you know, kind of take that to heart in your painting because there's this weird pressure on artists to like get it right. And that's why I'm always talking about perfectly imperfect and all that because there are, there's so much beauty in the imperfections. Let me just set those down and we're gonna get ready to do some painting. Hopefully I haven't bored you too much with my show and tell. I just um, thought it's kind of nice to to show you where I've come from and uh, and that it's only taken me a couple years to develop this this hobby of mine and I've really enjoyed it um, along the way. So let's talk about our supplies. We're going to paint some little bookmarks and um, these are such a great little project. Sometimes you just need a project that's small that's not enormous and it's just something you can do in an afternoon and feel like you got something done. So what I've done is I've got these little pieces of watercolor paper and you um, can punch out a hole with a little hole punch like this guy. If you're fastidious, you could measure where the middle is. I will not. <laughs> Perfectly imperfect. <laughs> And um, then you just put a little bit of twine or ribbon through. I've got a bunch of different uh, different uh, ropes, ropes, twines <laughs> here. And so in that way, it's very simple. Use watercolor paper. This is 140 pounds, so it's got enough thickness. And of course, it's also good for painting on. Um, so, and then I'm using my um, Mugno watercolor 48 pan set. You could use any set of watercolors. I have two glasses of clean water. And I'm just gonna, those are just sort of slightly off camera there. And I have a couple small brushes. And as Chris was saying, we've linked these brushes in the description. Now I buy them in Canada because that's where I am. We've linked to the art uh, store where I purchased them. And that's just so that you can look at them, you can read the description, and you can find, hopefully find something similar um, where you are. Um, because it's just not possible to uh, link to the same brushes worldwide, but we're using pointed round um, Kulinski sable, Kulinski sable yeah. hair brushes. Yeah. Yeah. The companies in every country are a little bit different, so yeah. we've had a really hard time sourcing, since there are people from pretty much every pretty country. Pretty much everywhere, which is so cool. Yeah, which is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um, 
but it's not about the, I mean, yes, get a good pointed round brush, but it's not about the brush. It's uh, just about practice and enjoying the process of painting, I think, and you'll get there. Don't be, don't feel like you need a special brush or a really expensive brush to do good work. A lot of the time I'm working with dollar store synthetic pointed round brushes, and the only reason I don't use them all the time is simply because they just wear out so fast. But there's no reason that you can't get started with them. All right, let's do some flowers. Before you get started, yeah. a couple of people have asked, but the first person I saw, Joy McMullen, asked um, beginner question, why two glasses of water? Oh, I use two glasses of water so that I have a glass for my warm colors and my cool colors. And uh, so right now I'm going to start by mixing up some green and then say I do sit, I want to mix up a yellow or something for my flowers. I just don't want to, you know, mix greenish water into my yellow paint. So it just means I have to get up a little less often. It's still important to change your water as you paint, depending how large your piece is and how much you're doing. But um, yeah, basically warm colors and cool colors or light and dark, you know, however, however you want to keep your water clean. Um. I'm gonna switch we'll just this. Ask, you guys let us know. We can zoom in, um, but mm -hmm. it's, it's more of a if we need to. Yeah, like for mixing, we're gonna keep this. Um, we're going to keep this here. But then, if we're doing the painting and you want it zoomed in a bit, we can zoom in. Because now I'm done my my show and tell. So, <laughs> so for this one, I this green that I'm mixing, I'm using this really natural sort of muddy green and. To get it a bit darker, to get that bit of dark and depth, I am using a darker, more evergreen color. There we go. I also like to mix a little purple into my greens to darken them. I like the way that looks and the effect that I get with that. So there's a nice dark green mixed up. We're going to, for this one, do just a little simple floral design. The, um, Someone asked the dimensions yeah. of the. You said about that dimensions. Sort of three, oh, I three by seven. Um, maybe not quite. Maybe two and a half by five. I mean, I just cut pieces of paper. Like every one is different. Um, one's a little fatter. You, if you like a really slim bookmark, you could do that. So, does not matter. All right, and I think this is going to sort of succeed and the fact that we're doing a painting that's super tiny and delicate and sometimes just using that really small brush to do something that's super tiny and detailed. It looks so precise, but it's really not difficult to paint. Not difficult at all. Let's do something. Let's do a yellow flower. This is a color combo I go back to again and again. We'll pick up uh, you can start with a bright yellow if that's all you have in your palette. I'm going to mix this sort of yellow ochre color into mine, but if you don't have a color like that, you can mix in a bit of brown and that will, if you've got this lemon yellow, that will kind of calm it down a bit. So you don't need to have a huge selection of colors to, um, to kind of mix in a way that is a little more sophisticated or that speaks to your aesthetic. I might mix a little white in there too because you know I love those pastel shades. All right, let's start this. So like Chris said, if you want us to zoom in, just say, and because uh, now we've done our mixing and uh, I want to make sure that you can you can see this okay. Um, we had a good question that, yeah. you, that you cover sometimes. Uh, does it damage brushes to use them for mixing? Yes. I've heard you should use cheaper brushes for mixing. Yes. So it's better to use your cheap synthetic brushes for mixing um, because it, it, it's just, it doesn't mean if you use them once or twice that they're wrecked, but it's definitely harder on them because to get the watercolor paints up out of the palette, you're scrubbing at those little pans. And uh, mm -hmm. so it's certainly harder on your brushes. In videos, you'll see me often switch and I'll mention it, but there's also many videos or live streams like right now where I don't just because it's one extra step. But yeah, that's definitely a great idea. It's just like you shouldn't mix <laughs> your color and then go right to your page. You should always rinse that brush. You know, you just don't know what's in there. There could be a little hunk of brown, not a hunk, but <laughs> you know, 
get a nice clean brush and then come back and grab your paint and that is good advice that I don't always follow but yes <laughs> okay so for this little delicate floral bookmark that is going to be so cute we are going to start and do some really simple flowers you've seen me do stuff like this before a few little petals just do it in one or two or three brush strokes and then leave it alone one two one two you're using the belly of the brush to and dragging it across the page to form the shapes of petals and if you need to you can use the tip of the brush to refine the shape or you know add a little more pigment or join them all in the middle something like that just keep it real simple okay another question actually no it's just a couple of people mentioned that where the inside the picture in picture is mm -hmm. that it's actually covered by the chat bubbles when you're watching it on a phone is there any way you can put it to the top oh yeah yeah we can put it to the top sorry just keep going yeah. there we go yeah yeah sorry about that guys we're trying to put it in the spot where it's like the least intrusive <laughs> and i hope this is okay it's if, if you want it closer let us know all right Okay, Becca was just asking, how can you tell when you have the right balance between the amount of water versus paint? As a beginner, this is something I really struggle with and I feel like most of my flowers come out as blobs. So there's a couple things. I mean, as far as your pigment goes, uh, you want to, you're just going to want to do some practice pieces because, um, so that you know, okay, if I add this much water, this color is this light. If I don't add a lot of water, I get this sort of color. You know, a yellow can go from really, really dark to barely there, and none of those are wrong. And then uh, that tip that I just said, you know, use the, wash the brush quickly, and then pick up some paint, some well-mixed paint. Just get a little bit in there, and you don't want super, super, you know, like water dripping off the brush. And then it, it should flow almost like you're using a, a pen. And I, that sounds, I know, probably a bit crazy if you're get, just getting started. But eventually, you're just going to have so much control. M move it in a bit yeah, closer. Yeah, okay. So we're just going to switch it? Yeah. Quick. Let's take a second. You can just look at my pretty face and we'll <laughs> zoom that in. You can zoom right in. Yeah, perfect. There's no bigger bookmarks. And then just refocus yeah that's awesome yeah I know that controlling the paint and figuring out the water can be so difficult when you're getting started and that's partly why I wanted to show you that work that I did when I began because you can see my flowers are a little more blob like they don't have the definition it that is something there's no way for me to perfectly answer it's just paint a lot paint for fun just paint silly things you know like just do test pages where you're trying out different brushes and different colors and just get a feel for the way that paint sort of flows off your brush um, let's do I'm kind of doing some flowers that are like just a little heart shape or something like that they'll look like they're tiny almost like little buds and we'll put one more down here I like to, you guys know I like to, to make, whereas this flower is just a wide open flower, to make one that looks like it's opening, do the top three petals and then just a little short petal in front can give me a nice looking flower and then maybe just one more over here. It can really just be any shape, right? Almost, these ones almost can just be little blobs. And all we need to do now is join those with some little leaves and it's going to look so pretty and you could um, you could make so many of these for friends and family and stuff like that. Got a good question about the color of your nails. Oh yeah, I have no idea. Sorry, I think it's a Revlon or an SE polish, like a dark gray. I'll see. How I, can, I can see if I can find it later, and we'll put it in the video. Yeah, we can put it in the video description. 
Actually, this is a good opportunity to say we will be posting this mm -hmm. live stream for people to watch later on. So if you have to leave in the middle of it, mm -hmm. don't worry. You can yep. watch the rest later. Pick it up where yep. you left. Um, and all the live streams are posted on the channel. If you don't go to the channel homepage that often, it's kind of a good hub. I've just redone all my playlists so they're updated with like videos that you might have missed or not seen lately. Um, so definitely go there and you can see the, the latest live streams are all, are all posted as well. But mm -hmm. Yeah, I rarely do my nails, but since we have nothing to do, I've been finding time <laughs> for uh, giving myself a little manicure. Okay. Um, then we have a couple questions. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the weight of the watercolor paper, because people are asking why it's not shrinking. Mm, okay, sure, yeah. Um, let's talk for a sec, because I want to talk about these brushes. So the watercolor paper that I'm using is 140 pound. That's normally what you see me use on the channel. Um, I use 90 pound paper when I want to print onto it. So um, if you are printing off images of your work, it can look really nice to be, have it printed on proper watercolor paper. 300 pound is like super heavy, a little more pricey. I use that for really large scale projects. For all of these small and medium sized projects, I always use 140 pound. I find for the most part, even a larger painting, it won't buckle. Now it is, it's quality 140 pound paper, but it's not like super expensive or anything. And in fact, we linked a Canson pad that I use for small projects like this because it's a really good price point. It's not expensive and it's like for cutting up for bookmarks, you don't want to use your arches. So the Canson um, won't buckle typically. Uh, and if, you, if you're doing something this small and you're getting a lot of buckling, it's either not proper watercolor paper, you've got way too much water on, the, on there, um, especially for a small painting like this, or um, it's you know 90 pound paper and it's not um, dense enough it's not heavy enough so things to consider all right so before I answer another question I just wanted to mention that for this part I was using my um, my number two pointed round brush and now I'm switching to a number uh, I think this is a number one so it's just a little bit smaller and what we're going to do is just start doing these delicate stems. You don't want to take up the entire bookmark. A, a simple design like this I think succeeds because of the use of negative space as well. So just a little bit of twine, lots of white space, and you'll have something that's really sophisticated. A sophisticated bookmark. <laughs> so important. <laughs> So just using the tip of the brush. Is there any other questions? Yeah. Okay, so okay, I think you answered the one vote, the right balance between the mouth. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the next one would be from Marta. Yeah. Is there a way to preserve your paint later on, like mm -hmm. uh, coat, to coat the bookmark, to like protect it? Oh. Um, you know, I don't really, I mean, there are some good sprays, and if you go to a proper art store, which I know right now you can't, but if you go to an art store, there are lots of different um, spray fixatives. I've just never used anything on watercolor, so I don't really know. Um, There's no reason that you wouldn't be able to use yeah. a spray fixative on, yeah, totally. on paper, but yeah. um, I mean, if you're really worried about the longevity of the product, you might want to use a higher quality paint. Yeah. In the first place, like that's how you're gonna get a color fast. That stays, yeah, um, that stays true. Yeah. I mean, this paint is sort of like um, it's in between kind of craft, kids quality, and artist quality. Artist quality paint has pigments that are light fast and they won't change over time. This paint, you're not gonna see a big difference in it, especially um, for like a bookmark which isn't hung in the sun. Uh, I paint with usually these student quality, mid quality paints because I'm painting for fun and just having fun with it. And you know, all the paintings that I have sitting in the drawers here that I was just showing, you know, they haven't changed over the last couple of years. So, but over time they will change more so than at like a really good quality uh, paint would. Just the pigment quality is, is different. Uh, okay, so now that I've put in some really delicate little stems, you guys know where this is headed. 
we'll just use the belly of that round brush and we'll make some little leaves and we'll join those with stems as well. So use your tiny brushes for this project and we'll create something that's detailed and it looks like it takes forever to do but it really doesn't. It's just about going in there with a small brush. The leaves can kind of go any which way. They can be any size. I was about to put my brush in my tea. <laughs> okay. And you might want to add a bit more water so that you'll change up the color. You can get some lighter leaves going. I think that's kind of nice. There we go. Just going to add a few more in here. Someone said they used Mod Podge to seal their bookmarks. That's good. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, and you can even get matte Mod Podge, can't you? Yeah. So you wouldn't necessarily have to even have a gloss on it if you didn't want a glossy finish. There we go. Do you want a, a real easy question? Okay, give me an easy one. Okay, Julia <laughs> said, someone asked about the nail varnish, so I'll go ahead and ask where you got the beautiful jumper. Oh, you guys are so complimentary. I was gonna put on like a new jumpsuit that I got, and then I was just lazy, and I'm just so used to wearing sweats, so I was like, well, sweats is fine. <laughs> um, but I just ordered this from, oh, I think I got it at The Gap. It was on sale, ordered from The Gap. I don't know about you guys, but I have been doing a little more online shopping than I normally would at this time of year. Mm -hmm. It's just like something... A little more eating than, than, little than more we eating. normally would. <laughs> yes, a little more eating, a little more baking, a little more bad movie watching. I'll tell you all about the bad movies we watched this weekend. <laughs> we went on a like bad teen flicks kick. The year that we moved in here, we were sort of stuck <laughs> indoors, just trying to build the business together over the course of one winter. And that winter we went through like a watching bad, like sci-fi and action movies from the nineties. And so now we've like, now we're doing a bad teen flicks. It's kind of fun <laughs> yeah. watching movies on a theme yeah. <laughs> when you have all day. <laughs> okay. Let's put one more stem in there. Sometimes it's so much easier to pull that brush towards your body. I find that's a, a nice natural movement or motion. So you can always turn things upside down. And you know what else I want to do is kind of fill out. It's better not to put the bow on either until you're done painting, but I just want to show, show the end. Kind of annoying that it's not lying flat, but I'll survive. And yeah, really just looking for where else would another leaf or something look good. I think that's pretty much what I want. All these tiny little delicate little guys. Now here's a good question. Yeah. Julia asks, when you say add water, do you mean you dip your brush in the paint and then in the water? Or do you actually mix more water into the paint you've already mixed? It can be a bit of both. Here, I'm going to mix up a brown and I'll show you how I'm going to do it. So, here's my paint. I'm going to move my warm <laughs> colored water over here. And so I have a clean, wet brush right now. What I want to do is scrub at that brown pan, bring the paint over. This is how I do it, mind you. Bring some pigment over onto my palette. And then that is probably fine just to use like that because I've got water in the brush and then I've got pigment. But if it's a little dark or whatever, you can add more water into it. Like just literally just added kind of a brush full. Rinse that brush again. Here's how you would add a different color as well. So I want to add a little purple into my brown. Rinse my brush, 
with a wet brush, I scrub at that purple, and I tend to kind of put it beside on the palette. Rinse again, and then I will mix that in. So actually it's not too much purple, that looks good. I like the way purple kind of cuts through brown. So yeah, for you want a brush full of water, scrub the pan or the disc or the cake, whatever you call it, bring that pigment over. To add another color, get a clean wet brush, add that color in, and then it's up to you. Do you want a, a paint that's a little more watery? Put a little more water in there, just a drop or two. I mean, I'm working very small, mind you. If this was a larger piece, I, I would have to add a lot more pigment and a lot more water. But all I need right now is a little bit of dark brown to do the stamens and really just bring those flowers to life. So, and then once again, remember it's so important. You don't want a brush that's full of mixing paint that has a bit of purple in it and a bit of brown and it's full of paint. You want to clean that brush, dry it, and then just, and I mean blot it on your paper towel. That's all I mean by dry it. And then pick up a bit of paint, the nice paint that you've mixed. And now you should have a good, a paint that's sort of the right, whew, this hit my chest. Okay, um, and uh, you should have a paint that's the consistency that you prepared and you've got just a bit of that paint on your brush so now you're in control of that paint. And actually I even have too much on there so I'm getting these big uh, blobs which is fine but if I want more control, I want to do a fine line, I'll need even less paint in the brush and you can see I can, you know, do sort of thinner, finer work when I'm carrying less paint in that paintbrush. And I'm just doing kind of an abstracted combo of little tiny lines and dots to um, give the look of just a little color in the center of that, those flowers. And then for these flowers that where we did more of a heart shape or a triangle, I might just do a couple lines and just leave that front petal very short. And that way we get these flowers that look like they're blooming and they're not all the same. They're not all on the same angle. So yeah, I think that looks cute. And that's, you know, what did that take? 15 minutes, plus we were talking about nail polish and jumpers and whatnot. So yeah. super simple. <laughs> and um, yeah, you could send a bunch of these to, to uh, friends, to your family, just let them know you're thinking of them. You could always write their name across the bottom or something like that. So yeah. Oh, I love that. Patty said she put a simple coat of Mod Podge on a bookmark that she made in 1992. It's still in perfect condition. Very nice. Yeah, yeah, I, <laughs> I believe that. that Mod Podge is a beautiful product. Actually, on the weekend, I tried doing a watercolor collage. Oh, maybe if I have time at the end, I'll show you that. You know, it just goes back to what I was saying about Sure, you, I can paint oranges and they look real, but is that really how I want to paint? It's so much fun to have fun with your art and to liberate yourself from the idea that something needs to look real. Like, this doesn't look real. This is the idea of a little flower, but it's really just shapes, and I love that. That's, you know, I think that's the best best kind of thing. So um, maybe if I have time, I'll show you my watercolor collage, because it was the collage is all about getting your brain to just think of it differently. Okay. So, envelope decorating. We're basically going to make a sweet gift for a friend. So we have our bookmark done and I have some envelopes here. It doesn't matter what color you use. I always buy packs of the blank um, craft paper and the white. And so um, I think what I'll do today is use the craft paper ones. I think the easiest way to work on um, this is to open it up so that it's not kind of flipping and flopping all over on you. And then I will grab my pens and pencils and whatnot. I've got a little set of pencils and pens here. And uh, we're going to, in pencil, we're going to come in just a centimeter from each side of this triangular flap. So it doesn't have to be a perfect line, although 
If you're not allergic to rulers like I am, you could use a ruler. <laughs> and so, there we'll do another line. I need to come in a little further. Of course, we'll erase this later. It gives us this nice little section. Actually, I think I like that kind of facing me. So, um, yeah, can you see that okay? So what I've done is just come in one centimeter and put a line, centimeter, line. I basically put a border on the flap of my envelope. And uh, then I am going to use a white gel pen. These are linked in the video description if you are in the market for a really good gel pen. These Signo ones from Uniball are um, awesome. And then if you're doing a white or gray or whatever color envelope, you know, the fi use a fine liner or use a black jelly roll pen. Uh, anything goes as long as it just stands out and looks pretty. So I'll switch this view so you can really see what I'm doing. But all we're gonna do, it's simple, just like the bookmark. We're going to fill this in with some tiny florals and it's just gonna be such a cool surprise for your friend when they get this in the mail and they turn it around and it's like, bam, flowers. Okay, that's the plan. Um, and I'll make myself a little smaller. There we go. All right. Envelope, gel pen. Let's do this. Any other questions? Um, Adina asked, uh, what is your favorite thing to paint other than florals? Um, oh, my a favorite thing to paint other than florals. Yes. Good question. Um, can I say fruit or, you know, florals are my main subject, but I also like just trying out whatever, like whatever pops into my head. I don't know if I have another favorite subject, but uh, last year I tried doing like houses in watercolor and people. And uh, so I think just branching out and doing something that's different, that's my favorite. <laughs> And what I'm doing here when we're going in with the pen, think about doing um, little illustrations that go right up against the line because that's the most important part is you want this line to be, um, like you want to see the line once we erase the line. So I have put a cute little leaf right there and then right here I'm going to do like my little vine I might even have to give that one another leaf, just like that. So you can always, you know, there's always a way to fill in. If you watched the um, botanical lettering, this is just the same concept, you know, just making a shape, which could be a letter or it could be a triangle, and just filling it in. So pretty simple, but again, simple but impactful. That's the formula that we're usually trying for around here. So let's fill these guys in. So I have a comment. It's not actually a question, but I just think this is super cool. Yeah. Safira said, I love your work. I'm a baker and I use your tutor tutorials to paint on macarons. Oh, wow. That's so, so cool. Safira, that is like super cool. That is super cool. And kudos to you for being able to bake a macaron. That is no joke. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those are very tricky. <laughs> okay. The gel pens are actually linked in the description below if people are looking for them. Yeah. It's, it's American Amazon, but they're yeah. The, uh, yeah. They're the Uniball Signo. You can check out the link and uh, see exactly what we're using because this is this really is a great gel pen. Highly recommend. Let's do a larger flower. I just start with a bunch of dots. And then do two petals. They can be a little, little crunchy, a little wonky. <laughs> Maybe a few little lines. And then we're going to do some larger leaves. And you can see this would this will fill in pretty quickly. We'll do another. Anytime you don't know what to do. Just go for the simple leaf design <laughs> like that. It's a great filler of space. Well, uh, Manny Condon has asked a couple times, mm -hmm. is brush pen is best for floral paintings? And I just want to say, Manny Condon, I, I'm not sure mm. um, what you mean since 
if you were using a brush pen, you would be you wouldn't be painting, would you? Right. So maybe maybe we're just maybe it's a language thing. Yeah, maybe it's just a language thing. Like I, I just want that question. She's asked a number of times, so I want that question to get answered, but I'm just not sure. Is the brush pen best for floral painting? Um. So if you mean like I for the painting portion, I recommend using these pointed round paint brushes, and um. Yeah, and then if any time if I'm doodling or drawing flowers, I'm using just any anything, pencil, fine liners, jelly roll pens. Um, it's totally not about the supplies. Like, yes, it's great to have the supplies and we try to link our supplies, but you can do, art is all about experimenting. So don't feel like you need to have the exact pen that I'm using. Mm -hmm. Put some more flowers in here. So Chris and I are on to week four now of our staying home. This is the beginning of week four, at least here in Prince Edward Island where we live. And yeah, we're, we're going to be a little crazy. <laughs> it's a very interesting kind of experiment to stay in. And it's funny for us, our life hasn't really changed that much. We are still working from home and, um, you know, so we're, we're very lucky that we get to keep busy and do the job we love, but it's just, it's so different not being able to go out and interact with others and mm -hmm. go for a coffee and yeah so we so, oh yeah question yeah just a couple of people have asked if you have somewhere where you sell prints no not yet not yet but we are working on that we are hoping within this year to sell prints of my floral watercolors as well as sticker packs um, so that you can get some stickers for your bullet journal or computer or whatever. So that is something that we are definitely working on. All right, let's do some more little leaves, little flowers. I mean, the nice thing about doing a piece like this is that it can be a little messy and because everything's so tiny, it doesn't really come out looking like it was messy or unintentional. It just looks really sweet <laughs> and intricate. There we go. And if you can't think of what to do, simply changing up the size of leaves or the shape. Like I've done a lot of these rounded branches, but why don't I do one that has more of like these long, thin, type leaves and that just looks just changes it up just enough and maybe we'll do some little berries fill in some space here this is going to come together pretty quickly oh I smudged oh well that's okay you know you can't obviously can't erase pen but when you make a little mistake something like that in your journal or whatever you're working on it's not impossible to at least it's not possible to erase but it's always worth once it's totally dry taking an eraser to it and seeing if you can lift up a bit because the eraser can sometimes almost work like sandpaper and just take up enough of the paper that you can kind of get rid of your smudge a little bit sometimes that works Okay, we'll just finish it off with some tiny little roses. Leaf in there. I think that's looking pretty good. You can always do some tiny leaves right along that pencil line. Sometimes I just do like little heart shapes or something. Just it'll just look like where's an example of where I might need something, maybe like right there. Just a little heart. Doesn't really matter what it is. It's just a little doodad. Oh, I think that looks so cute. It's just something, just a little something special for your friend when they get the letter. And then on the front, you could simply, you know, write the address. Here's a good question. Mm -hmm. Marta says she's following the e-course and she's liking it. Oh, good. Um, and she's asking if we're planning on doing any more. Oh, um, yeah, we hope to. Yeah. They take a few months to yeah. make, and it's we don't stop posting on YouTube. Um, yeah. 
So it becomes, it's, it's quite a large workload. So we will hope to do more in the future, but. Yeah, yeah. and we love doing them. Um, and uh, right now we have an illustration e-course and we have the watercolor e-course. Um, and yeah, hopefully in future, those courses still stand and we're yeah. proud of them. And so now, now the next thing is just thinking of what, what else can we teach? How can we go further? I don't ever want to... Should rec anybody who's yes. interested in having an e-course, let us know what you yeah. think. And I'll, I'll take note. We might not deal with it today, but I'll take note. Yeah. And we'll think about it for the future. So let us know what kind of e-course you want to see. Mm -hmm, totally. Um, what about hashtags? Hashtags. I should have been mentioning the whole time. Like, If you have any ideas for hashtags, for sharing artwork, online we get so many um, examples of the work that you've done after watching the videos and we just need a, a hashtag so that those can kind of all be categorized and so that you can see the artwork that um, that all of you are doing because yes it, I don't, I see the work that you do but I would like everyone to see your your artwork when you post um, about a video that you followed or something like that. So yeah, we have to think of a hashtag. I have a list okay. of some that have been uh, recommended. Okay, good. Let's talk uh, it out. It's a long list, so. <laughs> okay. We um, might have to choose after the video and that's fine. Yeah, we might have to choose. You, uh, we'll look at some of these hashtags too and then maybe mm -hmm. next week if we do a live stream then we'll, we'll yeah. announce it then. Yeah, yeah, that sounds uh, good. Or yeah. we'll pick a few of our favorites, but I'm gonna, yeah. you want me to run through a couple right run, now? Throw a couple at me. Sure. Why not? Um, inspired by Shada. Or Shada Inspired. Okay, good. Dragging across the page. <laughs> hashtag, right? Okay, okay. Um, hashtag <laughs> Shades good. of Shada. A couple people said. Oh, that's fun. Hashtag Paint with Shada. Oh, yeah. Uh, my Shada Art. Okay, yeah, 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 that's yeah. That's pretty good. It makes sense. Uh, mm -hmm. Shada Art My Style. Oh, I like that. Because that says something about you as well. And that's kind of like the point yeah. but Shada is also a good thing to have in the hashtag because it makes it unique <laughs> yeah like Shada yeah. would make it you make more sense yeah yeah but um, that's that's a good one hashtag we love art the Shada way I like that I it's like that long. it's long but it's good yeah that's a good one yeah um, I am artsy I'm artsy creating with Shada oh yeah creatively imperfect oh that's fun tea with Shada Great, excellent. <laughs> tea, tea is always popular with being successful, yeah. <laughs> Love a good cup um, of tea. <laughs> beauty in the imperfections. That's good. I like that one. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Perfectly together. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's. Imperfect like Shada. Yeah. Or maybe perfect like Shada. Like them both. <laughs> um, okay. okay, so those are some ideas. Okay. Keep commenting. Belly of the brush. Actually, it's Belly of the times. brush, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good one. Um, maybe not, maybe not something about painting though, because people will be using it for bujo and illustration as well. Yeah, maybe a little bit more general. Uh, but yeah, but it doesn't really Shade matter. Shade at home. Mm hmm Shade at home. Like Shade that. at home. That's good. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, or Shada my way or Shada my that my style. Anyways, we're rambling. Um, okay, so if you're watching this live stream, uh, you know, and when it's not live, <laughs> like tomorrow or the next day, comment below as well if you have an idea for a hashtag because like Chris was just saying, we'll go through them, we'll sort through, um, we'll take all your ideas since we don't have any, and we will um, at least narrow it down and we'll, we'll maybe talk about it next Monday and then we'll like have the final thing next Monday. Yeah, and then we'll all be able to share with one another and show each other our art. Yeah, and that's the most important thing is it's that yeah. you can see not only what I'm doing, but how other how others interpreted the April cover page or the bookmarks or whatever it is. So anyway, that's all we're going to do today. A little envelope and bookmark, something that you can send to a friend, to a loved one, and let them know you're thinking of them. It doesn't have to take a long time. Um, I was yammering on, and this only took, you know, under an hour. So you could do a whole bunch, do them in batches, switch up the colors for the flowers. And, um, oh, we have a little giveaway. We have a little giveaway. Let me grab it. Sitting behind me here. Yeah, shade of my way, that's good. Ooh, yeah, shade of my way, I like that. So, I've got a little stationery giveaway since we're doing stationery stuff today. 
Um, we have some Baron Fig note cards. These are great for just making your to-do lists. There's washi tape, um, stickers and tapes and stuff from uh, Washi Wednesday, and then a nice pen as well. So just a fun little prize pack. And to win this prize pack, oh, I probably should have thought of a question beforehand. Um, okay, how about who can tell me first? This is just going to be a rush <laughs> to to the um, finish line. But whoever can, whoever is first to comment, what was the Tuesday video from last week? So what was the video that was published on Tuesday of last week? What was the, what was the subject matter? Um, Yes, Chris is on it. He is watching those comments like a hawk. <laughs> and in the meantime, I have one last thing I wanted to show you. And this is, actually I have two last things. This is the wreath from last week. Uh, if you were watching and following along, why don't I switch that? Oopsie. Um, that is finished and that's how it turned out. I had kind of filled most of it in, but this corner wasn't really done. It was um, kind of looking more fall because of the peaches and dark greens and mustards. And then to make it a little more spring, I added this really, really light, almost aqua blue. And I will be auctioning this off on my Instagram uh, sometime next week to raise money for charities associated with um, with COVID-19 and I will also be auctioning off this guy if you remember this from December my little watercolor wreath I still have that and uh, that will be up for grabs as well so if you'd like to help us contribute to uh, charities and um, get yourself some cute watercolor stuff uh, follow me on Instagram for that and then finally one last thing um, <laughs> keep messing that up. Uh, if you are not on our Patreon, and I certainly am not encouraging anyone to spend money right now that you need to save, but there is a lot of extra content over there. This coloring page is free for everyone. So this is available um, even if you're not a patron. It's all the flowers of the year, all the birth flowers. So if you're looking for more stuff to do, go grab that. I know Chris and I are like just trying to think of activities. <laughs> We're reading more, we're exercising more, we're, you know, anyways. <laughs> and then for anyone that is interested in Patreon, you can get uh, prints. Like this is not a painting, this is actually a print of my uh, herbs watercolor. So that's the type of thing if you have a good printer, not even a good printer, we have a $50 printer. <laughs> if you have a printer at home, you can print out my artwork so you don't actually have to purchase it. And there's all kinds of like floral illustration worksheets, stuff like that, um, and all kinds of uh, layouts. That was a March one, but there is an April one. Bujo stuff. Oh, this is a good one. It's a um, savings tracker. So it's like a coloring page for your journal or for your fridge. You color it in as you meet your weekly or monthly savings goals. So. Just a thought, I know everyone is hungry for more content and we are trying to um, to help a little bit with that. I know that we don't wanna like completely distract you from everything that's going on and we can't make things better, but we can at least just give you a little bit more content to be a bright spot, hopefully in your day. So, uh, giveaway winner? So we do have a winner. Uh, one person said hand, it is floral lettering, right? Yeah. yeah. So the one, one person said hand lettering first, but I'm going to go with floral lettering as our winner. Okay. So the first person to say that is mm -hmm. uh, our friend Omi Maxwell. Omi! That's great! Yeah. That's yeah, awesome! That just makes it sound like some sort of nepotism or something. Not, no, no. You can scroll back and look. Yeah. <laughs> and by friend, it's an online friend, and Omi is, I think, 11? And yeah, 11. And started following along patient, recently, and just, so yeah. Come. Yeah! Hey, that's great! So we haven't popped anything in the mail yet, but eventually I will be going out to take all the parcels to the mail once I feel like it's kind of safe to do so. But yeah, we've got lots and lots of giveaway stuff to give. So Omi, that one is coming for you. Okay, I got. I think that's that's everything, guys. Um, and I'm just checking comments. Yep, cool. All right. I don't think there's any other like pressing questions or anything. 
Oh, Natalie was just asking where do we get the flowers of the year? That's on my Patreon site. So it's patreon.com slash Shada Campbell. We'll put the link in the video description that will take you directly to that post because if you went to my homepage, you might have to scroll down a little bit. So yeah, hopefully that helps. All right. Thank you guys so much for all the sweet comments. And uh, yeah, this will be posted uh, after the video so that if you want to go back to the start and you want to see a little bit of that watercolor show and tell, you can do that. I think um, if you're struggling or you're sort of like, why did my watercolor flowers look this way? I think hopefully you might find it a little helpful to know that, yeah, mine looked like that too. I had a lot of blob US flowers and that's why I started putting in the fine liner um, just to kind of give myself that extra bit of precision and detail without actually painting it. So yeah. Okay. And don't forget to follow along on Instagram um, to potentially take part in those auctions that we'll be doing next week. I'm sorry, there's just not a good way to do them on YouTube. I apologize if you're not on Instagram, but we do have a, a large community over there as well. So yeah, I think that's everything. Is there anything else that we should mention? Um, other than this will be posted. Yeah. So if you missed anything, if you're if there's anything you came in halfway through, you'll be able to watch the entire thing. Yeah. It should be up within a couple hours. Yes. Yeah. It should be up within a couple hours. For just on the way out here, what I'm going to do is show you my watercolor collage and we will leave it at that. Thank you guys so much for watching and following along today. It was a pleasure to hang out with you. There we go. Bye guys.